Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we are seeing something that is pretty impressive. A huge shout out to the folks at Blender Studio for making this available. And this is called the Watchtower. And it is brilliant. You know, Watchtower is a virtual film production tracking tool. And it simply helps to visualize the status of short films and also, you know, films in sequences. So the idea for this tool is to solve one major problem. It's quite challenging when working with teams. As most people get to view projects from different angles, having a tool like this would sort of put everybody in the same space and understand what the final product or what the final film will look like. So the folks at Blender Studio, they've made this tool and initially they sort of made this as an add-on called Edit Breakdown and subsequently they moved this over to the web and you can actually check out the live demo which we're going to take a look at pretty soon. Now this was developed during the creation of Sprite Fright which is the most recent movie from the folks at Blender Studio and it comes with a couple of features like the grid view, the detail view, the timeline and the whole idea that you can pick this up and start working with it. Now we did talk about a tool that the folks at Blender foundation we're working with sometime which is called Kitsu and Watchtower is a web-based application that can fetch data from the live Kitsu web API or from a JSON file. So when we talked about Kitsu we looked at it as a tool that they're using in production at the time Sprite Fright was still in production and it sort of makes sense that Watchtower has been built on top of the Kitsu web API and it looks pretty nice. Watchtower itself is still out to display and edit video in sync with data for short timing information, their grouping in sequences, assets in the usage in individual shots, task type, and also the completion status of the assignee per shot. Now it just simply covers all the grounds that you'll be needing in terms of managing a shot production. So if we go ahead and take a look at what we have here, uh, this looks nice. I'm gonna put a link in the description that can bring you here where you can see all of this. And first off, let's talk about the shots. So individual shots like this, you can see that if you go ahead and uh, click on any of the shots, they get selected. And of course, you can simply scroll through by simply using the playhead and you can see that shot play. So you can hop onto any shot at all and take a look at the shot and see what's going on. You can see the duration of the shot. You can tell how many assets gets to be used. In this case, there's no asset being used. You can tell the task that was placed on this one and you can see the start time. So if we also go over to a shot like this, you can also see the very same thing. And uh, let's see if we can catch one that actually has asset. Cool. So with this, you can see that we have five assets. You can see the task. This is task number seven. And you can also tell the duration. Now, regardless of this, if you go over to the show section, you can show the current sequence. And within the current sequence, you can tell what is going on. So you can see this is the current sequence at this time. And if we also switch over to timeline view, we can get that going. We can also switch to all where we can see everything. Now, once we go back to the current sequence, we can also take a look at the layout. So you can see right here, we do have layout. We can also take a look at lighting, see who's been assigned to do all of the lighting that is happening right here. And the same thing happens with the pre-visualization. So if we would like to take a look at that, the storyboard itself, you know, all of this, they just sort of make sense. You can turn on or turn off the assignee. So in this case, if I go in and turn off the assignees, you can see we don't see who's been assigned to this. And we can also turn on or turn off the status of, you know, the project itself. So in this case, if we like to see this as heat maps or dots or stripes, we can also take a look at that. And this is to show the status of a particular shot at a given time. So if we go all the way back and let's just hit all, you can see that going and I can change this to dots in this case. If I turn on the assignees and go all the way back to where we have no task rendering, you can see that all of these are there. So if I turn off the assignees and go all the way back and click on the current sequence, we can see what the current sequence is. And we can also choose to see a couple of things. So for some reason, we don't see who was responsible for this one. And now I can go all the way back here, change this to shorts, set it to asset, and you can tell what asset was used at every given time. So in this case, if I move the playhead to any of this part, so let's say I move the playhead to somewhere like this, you can tell what asset was being used and I can switch this back. So you can tell what asset was being used. If you would like to see this based off the concept itself, you can see based off the concept, you can also see this based off the shading and you can see it based off rigging. So we can move this and uh, you can tell. So all of these highlighted ones are the assets that have been used at a given time. And uh, we can move this all the way to a point like so. And we can see all of this. So it just simply makes sense to see that there is something that exists like this. 
And for those who are considering making short films or maybe you're thinking about working as a team with Blender, I think taking advantage of a tool like the Watchtower would definitely come in handy. And something else which is also pretty impressive that you can also see is right here we have the shots, storyboard, pre-visualization, layout, all of these things. And depending on which of these views that you're switching to, you can see all of these and take advantage of them. It's also worth knowing that now that we're looking at the assets, you can click on any of these assets and tell where they were used in the scene. So in this case, if I go ahead and click on the lighter, for example, you can see that we have the lighter being used here, the lighter is being used here, and of course, there is also the lighter being used here. So of course, you know, you don't really get to see it, but it is within that shot and uh, it counts for that. At the same time, if you go ahead and click on the snail, I think we do have the snail here and we have the snail right there. We have one right over here and also one here during the credit. And for what is what, if you just want to watch Sprite Fright again, you can definitely come over to this part, press the playback button and watch the entire movie all over again and uh, you know this is a beautiful movie and of course it's more than just an entertainment material now as it's also something that you can use to learn both how to make your own next shot and of course how these shots were put together meanwhile for those who've been wondering about reading up on some of the blog posts on sprite fright maybe you want to learn more about the whole idea of sculpting for production you know creating simple characters set dressing for future films or for simple films or small films like this you have lots and lots of blog posts that would come in very handy that you can consider taking a look at. And for those who are also thinking about the README, how can they use this? How can they set it up for themselves? Huge shout out to Pablo Vasquez for making this one available. As you can go ahead and read up on this one and see what and what you can get from it. And of course, if you'd like to make a clone copy of this and also work with it, you can also take a look at GitLab where Francesco has actually made this possible. It's also worth knowing that you might want to consider checking out Zoo as this is compatible with the Zoo backend. And for those who haven't heard about Kitsu before, you want to see the Kitsu add-on for Blender as it's a production management tool that was developed for Sprite Fright. So the entire article that I'm also going to link in the description will guide you through how you can work with this and also a couple of things you need to know about the Kitsu add-on. And this comes full circle, especially if you're considering making a short film with Blender or you like to test out this new set of management tools. So this is more like it for those who like to take a look at all of this. Probably you want to read up on it. You want to test it out for yourself. Links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, Peace.